The success of Super Mario Bros. was insane. It created a franchise that would turn into the biggest phenomenon in gaming history. It found its way into pop culture. I mean, everybody on the freaking planet that isn't brain dead can probably recognize Mario, even if they never played a video game in their lives. The game sold over 40 million copies, so it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to determine that a sequel was inevitable. Now, you may all know the infamous story by now behind the sequel, but I'll refresh you in case you missed it. The sequel in Japan, Super Mario Bros. 2, very much resembled the original, but was never released in North America because its difficulty was expected to be too much for American gamers. So they took another game of theirs, Doki Doki Panic, tweaked a few things, inserted the appropriate Mario characters and items, shipped it overseas, and called it Super Mario Bros. 2. So this may not be the quote-unquote real Super Mario 2, but it's the Mario 2 that I and everyone else I knew grew up with. Here's the story right out of the game. When Mario opened the door, climbing a long stair in his dream, another world spread before him and he heard a voice call for help to be freed from a spell. After awakening, Mario went to a cave nearby and to his surprise, he saw exactly what he saw in his dream. Okay, so obviously the Japanese to English translation isn't very good here, but the story is still goofy as shit. Now since this is a repackaged version of a completely different game that was never intended to be converted into a Mario game in the first place, it bears very little resemblance to the original. There are some similarities, like there are still worlds with sub-levels and some of the items returned like the Star Man, Mushrooms, and Coins, but they're all acquired differently and sometimes even have a different effect than they did in the original. The enemies are all completely different from the top of the roster down, even the final boss has changed from Bowser to Warp. And instead of jumping onto enemies to crush them to death, this time you'll pick vegetables up from under the ground and sometimes other objects and throw them at the enemies to kill them. You can even pick up some enemies and commit the ultimate form of double murder or even triple murder and beyond if you can get the domino effect going. Another major difference is that you don't have to play as Mario. You can also pick from either Luigi, Toad, or Princess Toadstool, each of which have different abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. Mario has solid running, jumping, and vegetable plucking skills. Luigi has mediocre running and vegetable plucking, but awesome jumping as he gets up real high and kicks around to somehow keep him in the air for a little bit longer. Toad is the fastest runner and veggie plucker, but he has weak ass jumping. And the princess is the slowest at running, the slowest at pulling vegetables, and is a mediocre jumper, but if you hold the A button after jumping, she'll float in the air for a little while. I guess her dress gives her some aerodynamics. And with every character, you can increase the height of your jump by holding down the duck. And after a little while, you'll stop flashing, which enables you to pull off a super jump. It's definitely helpful to get to hard to reach areas, especially with someone like Toad, who doesn't jump all that high to begin with. Now, I personally like to use Luigi the most, and although there are certain levels that he's the best choice, which I'll mention specifically in the walkthrough, I suggest just using whoever you're most comfortable with, or just change it up here and there for shits and giggles. You get a life meter in this game where you can take two hits, and you can increase your maximum hit points to three or four if you can find the hidden mushroom. To find this mushroom, you'll need to find a potion which is usually disguised as a vegetable. Drop it, and it'll bring up a door that'll send you into a subspace where the vegetables are replaced with coins, and if you're in the area where the mushroom is, you'll be able to increase your life meter by picking it up. Now the screen is stationary in this parallel universe, so you have to pick the right area, and you have a limited amount of time once you're there. The coins that you collect here will be used after you beat the level in a slot machine game that can award you with extra lives if you match up the right combination. The amount of chances you get to make these matches corresponds with how many coins you collected during that level. If you get sent down to just one hit point, you'll shrink like in the previous game, only this time you'll start off big. You can increase your health meter by a point if you kill 10 enemies and grab a heart that floats by. The other floating item that comes out of the ground is the invincibility star that shows up after grabbing five sets of cherries that you'll see from time to time. Now the game is broken up into seven worlds, each with three sub-levels with the exception of the final world which only has two, making up 20 total stages. The final stage of each world is a different boss, but the first two of each world is guarded by a sub-boss and the first transsexual character in the video game world, Birdo. 
This strange fellow, or lady, or whatever it is, usually carries a crystal ball that serves as the key to the door leading to the next level. He, or she, whatever, it, will spit eggs which you can jump onto and throw at him, or her. Fucking it. It fires one at a time periodically, but this is just the pink variation of Birdo. The red one will fire three in a row, and every once in a while it's a fireball instead of an egg, so you'll have to be careful. Your best bet is to only grab the third in each series of spits so you won't get hit with anything. Then there are the green and gray ones. Much like the red one, they'll spit three at a time, except they're all fireballs, so you'll have to use objects nearby to kill him or her. As you might expect, you'll see the pink birdo a lot more during the early part of the game, the red one during the middle, and the gray one toward the end. There's some overlapping, but that's where you'll see them for the most part. The strange part is the door that this crystal ball opens. You'll club a birdo, pick up the ball, and... Whoa, that fucking hawk's head that's randomly implanted into the wall's mouth just opens up. That's some creepy shit. I guess that looks trustworthy. Let's walk into it. it came to me in a dream. There are warp zones again, but accessing them is completely different from last time. Here, you'll run into these random jars that you can't slide into like all the others throughout the game. When you run into one of these and you have a potion that sends you into subspace, go down the jar and you'll warp into a specific world. You get three lives to start, and once you get a game over you have two continues, although you'll start from the first level of the world you're on rather than the actual level you left off on. Now although this is a completely different game from the original, and in some respects a different series, they've still maintained fantastic controls and gameplay. It's also more pleasing to the eye, as it's a lot more colorful than the first game. The backgrounds have a lot more detail and there's some nice animation like the swaying vegetables and the clouds. The soundtrack is pretty short in terms of song count, but there are some memorable tracks, like the indoor theme and the boss battle music especially. And an interesting quirk is when you pause the game you can hear just the rhythm section of the song that's playing in the background. So enough with the small talk, let's get on with the game. The first level introduces you to the enemies that are pretty much equivalent to the Goombas in Mario 1, the Shy Guys and Tweeters. The red Shy Guys walk off the edges of platforms and the pink ones don't. Climb the vine and grab the last veggie to get the potion and the nearby mushroom. Then later you'll enter this doorway, you'll just climb up a floor to get to the top and continue the level. Or you can go this way and use the bombs to blow up this rock wall and get to a shortcut to the boss. But taking the scenic route isn't difficult, and you can get a ton of coins over here in the mushroom after grabbing the potion. All you have to do in this part is jump platforms and climb vines where these big bug things called hoopsters are low enough for you to land on, and soon you'll take on Birdo and be done with the first level. The second level has a long ass pit that you can only pass by stealing the magic carpet from this pigeon. Wait for him to swoop down and pick him up to take control of the carpet. Keep him in hand so you can take out one of the red bezos that swoop down from overhead. Weave your way between the bezos, but the carpet only lasts a certain amount of time so don't pussyfoot around or you'll fall to your doom. Now when you land, there'll be two jars. Ahead of them is a locked door and you can't go any further. So going back to the jars. The left one leads to a one-up and the right one will lead to a key that'll unlock the locked door. Unfortunately, picking up this key awakens its angry guardian, Fanto. He'll chase you down like a motherfucker as long as you have the key. So run with it for a little while, and then drop it whenever you feel like he's getting too close and he'll back off. Then pick it up and start running again. Inside you'll have to blow up a few walls and you'll be introduced to the Sniffit, which is a shy guy in a gas mask that spits bullets at you. There's a potion up here, but you'll have to blow a hole in the floor to get to the mushroom. And once you get outside, you can get a potion from the roof back here and grab a shitload of coins, and right after that is Birdo. Now you can take a shortcut through this whole mess by jumping straight from the carpet to the roof, but you'll have to be quick with avoiding the bezos, and it really helps if you use Luigi or the princess. The beginning of the third level has a lot of cherries on the upper path, but you'll have to contend with a lot of sniffits, so you can take the safer route down below if you want. When you get to the log bridge, grab the potion and nearby mushroom. Then later on you'll find another potion, and you have a couple of options here. You can bring it back over here to this hill and throw it up here to get the mushroom and some coins, or you can bring it over here and dump it by this jar where you can warp to world 4. Otherwise, go into the door, climb the chain near the beginning, and you'll meet the sparks, a ball of electricity that circles the perimeter of any given platform. Grab these mushroom blocks and stack them up to give yourself a boost. Continue climbing while avoiding the sparks until you get to the door up here where Fanto is guarding another key. Grab the key and take it downwards, dropping it every now and then to keep from Fanto and kill off any pesky enemies. 
Let the sniffet here spit and then pass through the gap to get to the locked door. Maneuver slowly across these short platforms until you reach the crystal ball. The hawk mouth will lead you to the first main boss, Mauser. He's, well, a mouse. He's also got an obsession with blowing shit up as he'll throw bomb after bomb after bomb while scurrying around on this platform. Catch the bombs that he throws, but jump over the bombs in the corner and take it back away from the corner so you don't get caught in an explosion. Then jump and place the bomb away from where Mouser is standing, as he'll probably shift over by the time it explodes. After three hits, he's all done, and World 1 is complete.